Welcome back to Satisfactory. I have been uh, naughty and uh, cheated a little bit again in the awesome shop and I bought some uh, high-speed connectors so that I could research a couple of things in the MAM. Namely the inflated pocket dimension which means that I get five more inventory slots and I think this is the most inventory slots you can get. Uh, I also thought that we would uh, unlock the um, Supercomputer, I don't remember what's down here. Uh, that means we need 50 AI limiters. I think I have that around here. No, I don't have 50. So we're going to have to cheat a little bit more. And go buy a stack of those as well. So let's take that cart. Buy all. And take that. And then I have another stack of high-speed connectors here. So we'll open the uh, supercomputer. That's quick. Confirm. We have the geothermal generator and we also need the uh, smart splitter. That takes five minutes. So this is probably the um, overflow split splitter. I don't remember the name of it. it. Might actually be overflow splitter. But this is going to take five minutes. So we're going to just start that and leave it because I don't particularly need that right now. Uh, so let's put back the tickets. Uh, it's not like I have uh, too little of the tickets. And then we have to go restock our um, supply of computers. I'm not sure if we need them out at the outpost because we're going out to the outpost today. And we're going to uh, take a look at the uh, quartz notes. I've done some prelimin preliminary work out there. I've actually done a, quite a bit of preliminary work out there. Uh, but I couldn't record that because it's a lot of foundation work. Um, on the, the railroads that I've built out there and uh, so forth. And I keep being frustrated by the uh, roundabouts because uh, they, they are not exactly what I would call um, uh, predictable. Uh, as a matter of fact, they are so unpredictable that uh, oftentimes they, they don't work at all. Uh, even if I set them, change them, they still take me in a direction that it just decides that oh, you're going that direction and I don't care what side the uh, the change or the track changer is on. So, yeah. But, but it's really not a problem because I can just take down the... the um, train anyways and rebuild it but uh, it's uh, it's something that I hope they will fix because yeah let's see I do have enough motors and rotors I could use a little bit more concrete but I do have a truck out there uh, and that truck does contain a fair amount of uh, resources but 900 concrete should be good I should also get some more encased industrial beams because we do need mark 4 belts out there Let's grab a couple of stacks of that. Six, good. Uh, I don't think we need this many iron plates. Uh, I could use a couple more steel beams as well. Yeah, six should do. And let's replace that stack of 40 with a stack of 100. And likewise with the iron rods, let's replace that. We can dump some of those iron plates into the uh, the sink. I have a temporary sink here. I need to do something about the hub area because I don't want the hub to be here. Uh, this was just the, the best place to put it back when I set it up. And I'd rather have a, a bit more of a... Eight stacks, that's nice. I'd rather have a little bit more of a, a dedicated area to these buildings that stands out from the rest of the base. I can also put these back in here. And that should be good, I think. Yep. So let's go back to the train terminal. And we'll just uh, drive a train out to the uh, outpost. Of course, I'm going to have to do it on manual because I don't have a train station out there. I set up the area where I want the train station, 
but I'm going to explain the area before I actually build the train station together with you guys so that you can see how I do that because that is also something that is nice to uh, to learn. They are quite big and unruly. Now I'm not sure if the track changer over here is set to go to the right or straight ahead. Uh, but one thing that I have noticed is that every time I reload the game, uh, the, uh, the track changers seem to reset. So this should go to the right, I think. No, it does, and I don't want to go here. I'm not going to bother uh, going back, so I can, of course, do the track changer. Uh, this one has been slightly reliable. <laughs> slightly being probably an understatement. So let's do this and continue on. Now the roundabout, that's... I, I've just given up on the roundabout. The, tra the track changers don't work at all. No matter how I set the, uh, the track changers in the roundabout, if you go on manual, uh, when I'm coming down from there, it always sends me out to the, uh, that side, so... This sends me to the correct set. Okay, so, yeah. Having a train station up here is going to be very helpful because then I can just set up a, a tr schedule for the train and uh, go there that way instead. Okay, let's stop here. And always take care when you exit the trains on heights like this because I think I would actually die if I fall down there. So this is the area where I want to build the train station and I've set it up, uh, marked it with those um, small conveyor poles just so I know where it's supposed to be. Uh, I needed a couple of tracks out from the station before I could do the turn. And then I have the, um, the train line is going to uh, go out here. I've built the, uh, the decorations around here. Uh, basically what I'm doing with the decorations is it's very simple. I have the, uh, the uh, support beam. Uh, when they are this close, I don't build uh, uh, an inverted ramp because why, why would I? It just looks weird, so I just leave it like that. Then I use an inverted uh, 8x2 ramp on the corner, and uh, yeah, that's about it. It's it's quite simple. I don't want to spend too much time uh, building these, uh, these ramps. Up here I've prepared some constructors, uh, measured them out. I didn't want to bother taking them down again. Uh, you've seen me place down constructors many times already, so that's not going to be a problem. But I haven't done anything else. I have not connected anything up. I've uh, measured where the belts are going and... Uh, well, I need to tear these down, actually. Uh, because they're supposed to be on this uh, angle here, or this grid line, not there. So I have to place down those anew. Um, this miner is going to present a, a minor challenge when it comes to taking things in here, but I believe that it is enough uh, room between the miner, oh, sorry, and the um, backside here that I can take in things in between here from the miners. I hope so. But that's something that we will tackle in this episode. First of all, let's get around to building the actual train station. So what I found with the train stations is that it is very helpful to use a lookout tower for that because they are so big and it's really useful to be looking at this from above. Uh, let's go to the train station hotbar and that's the station. You see it's, it's humongous. So and you also need to be careful with the arrow there. So I want it centered here, and I want it to be on the um, on the uh, seam. So I believe this is correct. Yep. And then I can just remove the, the lookout tower because the uh, cargo stations will snap to the station. Uh, I was supposed to remove those. Uh, you should also be aware of the fact that you can't build 
a freight platform uh, without having something to snap it to. It says this must be placed in line with another train platform. So you have to build a station first. I think the same goes for an empty platform. Yep, it does. So what I was thinking here is that I'm going to have an empty platform here. And just use the same train station back at base. Then again, maybe not. Um, because what will happen then is that we're going to have trains coming into the same train station. And sin well, there is no signaling or, or collisions yet. So it is not a, a, a problem that that will happen. But yeah, it's going to look stupid when the trains come in at the same time. So we need two platforms here. Um, I should really stop doing the ums all the time. I'm trying to uh, stop doing that. I'm going to build two empty platforms because we only need two uh, freight platforms currently. And then we need to connect up this. There is a seam over there. There we go. We need to connect this. To, oh, that's the wrong way. We need to connect that to the seam. Apparently the railroad has a too sharp turn. So there is an order you need to build things in. Uh, this this should work. No, that should not work. What's wrong then? Okay, I, I think the problem is the um, the station here. I need to remove the, uh, the platform. So then we build this. Make sure that it's on the seam and that it looks straight. That looks good. And then we can connect those up together. And always... Okay, I have to connect that one up there. There we go. Always make sure that you get the switch. If you don't get the switch, the train will just stop here. Because that means it doesn't have connection. Now we should be able to place down this. So... the. Rails is a bit, bit finicky as of now, but uh, I'm pretty sure that they're going to fix that. So from the station, we're going to need two um, of the uh, foundations. Then we move on to the turn here. There we go. And then we also have to have two here. So we end at the seam and we go here. And from here, I think we can just do a direct turn. Like so. And then we have to move over here and make sure that we stop at the correct seam here as well. Make sure that the, uh, the rail track is centered if you want it to be uniform. And then this can connect up to the track here. And again, make sure that you see the switch. So this is now a functional track where the train will drive out from the station here and go back on the right hand uh, railroad, which or rail track, which is going to take the train back to the station. So we have an in to the station or rather out from the main train network, depending on how you want to uh, designate it here. And we have an in to the train network or out from the station over there. Now, this is not going to be Hamburg Hauptbahnhof. Uh, I do like that they are using uh, real name station names, but uh, this is definitely not Hamburg, and it is definitely not the Hauptbahnhof of Hamburg. So, have an efficient day. Yeah, that's a good idea. This is going to be... Ah, what's the name of this area? Let me check that quickly. It's actually a little bit fun to, uh, to use the... Uh the names of the area satisfactory map um what's the word i'm looking for zones yep so climate zones yeah this would be something with a forest thing can i go to that site of course you guys can't see this but this is an early map so it doesn't have the uh the name Where I did find a map with the uh, the various uh, zone names. 
biomes. Here we go. This is the Titan Forest. This is going to be then a TF. Quartz production. Okay. I guess quartz factory then, or quartz outpost. If that's the amount of characters I'm going to be allowed to use, I think we're just going to call this TF Quartz, to be honest. So we have two freight platforms here. One of these are going to be for silica, and the other one is going to be for quartz crystals. But before I actually do that, let's also go have a look at the uh, Satisfactory Tools, which is made by Greeny. That is the previous uh, satisfactory.greeny.dev. And look at the item browser. I know you can't see this, but I will tell you what I'm looking at. So for the quartz crystals, the usages as an ingredient for the quartz crystal is the crystal oscillators. Those are the only basic recipe in the game that requires quartz crystal. And then you have two alternate recipes that also uses quartz crystals. One of them is an alternate recipe for the crystal oscillator. Uh, that recipe replaces cable and reinforced iron plate with rubber and AI limiters. It produces more crystal oscillators per minute, but taking in rubber and AI limiters, I'm not too impressed by that. I don't remember if that's a good recipe or not. The other one is the radio control system, where you need 10 heat sinks, one supercomputer, and 30 quartz crystals to produce 3.75 radio control units per minute. Now, the radio control unit basic recipe requires crystal oscillators, so by using that recipe, well, it does replace it with heat sinks, but heat sinks are actually pretty cheap to make. They require alkyd aluminium sheets, which that's a bit of a pain to make. But the thing is, since I have all of the alternate recipes, uh, that my recipe might actually be uh, a very good recipe for me to consider. But radio control systems is a way off. The other recipe that we make from raw quartz is, of course, silica. Silica is a very important recipe for aluminium production. Basically, if you want to produce aluminium ingots, you need 140 silica per minute in addition to 240 aluminium scrap. We'll get back to the aluminium scrap because the aluminium process where you refine the uh, bauxite together with water into alumina solution and so forth, is one of the more complicated resource uh, production chains in the game. And it is also one of the uh, chains that uh, I believe many people struggle with. So I'm going to have a dedicated episode for, specif for specifically showing how to do that in uh, at least what I think is one of the more efficient ways to, to deal with the refining process and then smelting down of the aluminium ingots. But silica, we're going to need a lot of silica. And that's basically what we're going to do out here. We are going to... Um, I don't know if I'm going to set up both of the outposts currently. The other outpost is down there. I haven't done anything with it currently. I can show it to you. I've set up the miners and I've prepared the area where we're going to have the... I don't understand why we hear spiders here. And I've set up the area where we're going to have the constructors and whether or not they're going to make silica or quartz crystals, I haven't decided. But... We also have the other two quartz nodes, which should be sufficient for uh, raw crystal, I think. Because crystal oscillators is the main thing, and I haven't even upgraded those to Mark III miners, as I don't have those yet. But... I'd really like to know where those spiders are. Um... Uh, 
yes, what I was going to say is that I think that we will have sufficient quartz crystal production out there when I upgrade those to Mark III miners, and I can also overclock them. They are normal nodes, but I believe the, the Mark III miner would produce 240, so we can get them up to 480 raw quartz each, which would give us 960 raw quartz, which will make a pretty substantial amount of quartz crystal. I think we're all good on that, to be honest. So what we're going to do now is uh, make sure that we get these on the correct uh, grid alignment. Let's tear these down and then start putting them up one by one. I have purposefully built too many of the constructors because I've made some calculations here. So the thing with the quartz crystal is that it requires 37 and a half raw quartz to produce 22.5 quartz crystal per minute, whereas the silica is op uh, the opposite, 22.5 raw quartz to produce 37.5 parts of silica per minute. So kind of opposite on the uh, on the numbers here. Which, according to my calculations, we are, from three normal nodes, going to produce 360 of the uh, uh, raw quartz. Which, through 16 of these constructors, we are going to produce 600 silica. Now, if I want to produce one full Mark V belt of silica, which is 780, I'm going to have to build 21 constructors uh, because that requires 968, no, 468 raw quartz uh, and 20.8 of the constructors producing silica. And what we're going to do, what we are going to do here is just set up four and five, six, seven, Eight, and then I'm going to tear these down. And the same on the other side, because I I'm happy with having sixteen of these producing in the beginning. I don't think we're going to need that much silica right off the bat. I don't remember exactly how much we need actually, but I think this will suffice. And if it doesn't suffice, then I can always just go out here and make more. Now I do notice that I have to belt this in on the same level uh, or the same grid line as these to get it in from this from the other side. And I do want the uh, quartz from the miners to come in on the same belt. So let's take a look at that. We first of all need to do the mergers here, and I think that we can do those on level... Mm. I need to think. Yeah we, yeah, we can do those on level 3 because they're going down afterwards, they're not going up. So it doesn't really make sense to have them uh, higher than the um, input material here. And now the mergers are behaving admirably. And I'm not complaining about that at all. So this miner worried me a bit, but it's not a problem. It's going to be fine, actually. Uh, apparently you can also build inside of it, but I'm not sure if it would... Ex you see, I can build it inside, but I don't, I don't think the belt would like that. Then I would probably have to go very high. I think the miners are 50 meters high or something, so... That's... that's... Uh, that would be a substantial height on the belts here. Okay, so this is a bit repetitive, but it is also part of the satisfactory experience. So the splitters 
we need them to go that way. Of course, those are not going to behave. So I can just as well build them and then turn it at the end. If you only would behave the way that I wanted you to behave when you choose to behave like now. Alas, no. Computer says no. So we can remove these. That'll make it look a bit more clean here. And then it's time to remove these, of course. Need to be a bit careful here so I don't accidentally remove the miner as well. There we go. Also, I think I recorded yesterday's episode without music. Uh, I do apologize for that. I occasionally, when I play off camera, I uh, listen to music from Spotify or YouTube. And I forgot to turn it on again, I think. I'm not sure, but I think I did. Now we also need some uh, conveyor poles here, stackable ones, so that we can get up to the correct height for the um, raw course. Of course the miner is not aligned at all, so we need to do an alignment on those. I don't know which side I want that alignment to go on. Apparently it doesn't matter, so we might as well just do that here. Mark II belt should suffice from the miner since it's producing 120 and I don't need to overclock. Now, of course, we won't get a snap line because that would be silly, wouldn't it? Okay, so it's snapping there. One, two then. So that's up to three. And that's on the... Uh, grating there so one two three four five six does does that work yep that is between so that's fine then one two and here is the crucial point i think i want to center it two three and this is going to be a bit of a conundrum, actually. No, 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 it isn't. Uh, what I need to do here is uh, I need to merge the lines, of course. And uh, merging the lines, thats uh, that would be challenging if I wanted to merge three lines when the backside is this way. Uh, I can't very well drag a belt through there. But what I'll do is, of course, I'll merge up the... Uh, contents from that one and the contents from that one out here and then I'll merge it merge it all together so that it goes into the um, array on this level or on this grid so we need to align the oh that is extremely rare But that's not bad. Let me just put down that here. That one is most certainly not aligned. But I want to see. Okay, so if I put a stackable conveyor pole there and I attach a belt to it, and then that means that the line is going to go here. So if I do a merger, see here, if I do a merger there, I think that's aligned. Yes, it is. And then one, two, three. I do I can just remove that actually so we want the lift here and we want that to go up to and connect that to the merger there remove these and 
And then I need to do one, two, this. And go up there. And we can just do the same here. But this one, we can just attach the lift directly to the machine on, which is, as I said, extremely rare. We can remove these. Ah, no. That's, that's not right. That is not right at all. I am much saddened by this because... Hold on. Yeah. I'm gonna have to do that. No squiggly belts around here. And then we need a Mark III belt going in there. That's 270, so we're going to have to need to use a Mark IV belt going into the array. Because we're going to be producing 360. And of course, 270 is less than 360. But 480 is more than 360. So, everyone was much surprised by this specific development. On the other side, we can use the Mark II belt, so that's fine. We can just have a lift going up, and two, and that should connect pretty neatly to there. Perfect. Then, before we do anything with the uh, belts on the... Uh, I don't want to go down here. Come on, game. Before we do the belts in those, we just connect that up. And we connect it up to there. And now we can feed the machines. And we do have a direct line going out from here. Which I'm probably going to have to take underneath. And then up at the other side of the station. Which begs the question, should I should I use foundations for that? Let's see here. Because it can come down here. Using foundations for it would be very useful in terms of snapping. But I don't know if those... That's a good question, actually. Do these things snap? Do they have snap points? Yes, they do. So it will actually be very beneficial. That is, of course, out. No, no, that is in. That is correct. So we want it to come in here. Which means that I do want to use foundations for this part. The question is, how far down? Because that is already in the ground. So if I do this... That doesn't look too bad. And I can bring it in underneath the station. And it's going to come down there. Now everything here is on the grid. I've been very uh, specific about having things on the grid here. So if I were to connect those two... Uh, the, as you can see, the foundation snap. There is no spacing between. That is probably overly pedantic. But in this specific case, you can see why I do that. Now, I want to have... Okay... So this is one of those things that can be a bit finicky, but I want to have it there. Because it needs to come down from there. And it would appear that it comes down in the middle. Let's just place a stackable conveyor pole there. I don't need all of the foundations, I just put them down. I might be happy with just having the foundations that go from um, sorry again my brain stopped functioning i might be happy with having the foundations that just have the uh, conveyors on them the poles 
and I can remove the rest. I'll see what it looks like when we've uh, placed it down. Because the less foundations, the better. I mean, this is one of the few areas that we have been to so far that is actually green and not a desert. And again, I chose to build in the desert because I actually like the desert terrain, so there is that too. Let's start at this end. So we're getting out 600. I did not bring any Alclad aluminium sheets out here. And I did not bring any tickets either. So I might actually go back to the base and fetch those. Because I don't know if I'm going to bother having two belts here. Only to have to go here and clean up again. When we get the aluminium production running. Which shouldn't be too far off. This is part of the... Um, preparation for the aluminium production this is what that's why i'm doing this because we need the aluminium production up and running as soon as possible and yes we are getting 600 silica so and i don't have the alkyl aluminium sheets and i need those so i shall be right back Okay, so while we are at the base, anyways, I figured we might as well build the uh, train station for the uh, quartz intake to the base. Is that arrow the wrong direction? Yes, it is. It needs to be this direction. So we want that to be on the seam here, which gives us the handy snap line, of course. And we need two freight, freight platforms, and we want the outputs to be on the other side, please. I don't think... I think that what I'm going to do here, actually, is do this, remove these, and do the uh, empty platforms. One, two, three. I'm going to need some more uh, heavy modular frames. That was unexpected. Well, you're going to have to go come with me to fetch the modular frames, then. probably need more more of them as well I'll I'll grab two stacks of them with me I have some in the truck but the truck is out at the outpost so that's not gonna help much I should build a, a hyper tube going to the storage facility but I haven't decided where I want the um, tier 3 and then tier 4 products. I think I'll just stack those in the... Uh, oh, that's the wrong container. I just think I'll just stack them in the same storage area. So if you grab two of these... Are you producing? Yes, you are. I might just put them uh, here. No, no, not here, but over there, I mean. One thing that I'm a bit concerned with, though, is the... Um, no, actually, that should be fine. I can't put them here. Well, now nah, that's the thing. I'm concerned with things like the lift over there. It might be in the way. Then again, the storage facility is not supposed to be like in my previous series, where it's a, a resource nexus where I take things out and uh, have it as an intermediary storage, which is basically what I did in the previous series. I want the uh, the storage facility to be its own thing, where I can go pick up things and uh, have it like that. Anyways, we need to remove this segment of rail now, and the reason for that is I, I you need to have a correct snap point because you can't just snap a rail in on a rail. That that doesn't work for some reason. So this has a turn curve of three which means that we need the rail to start here so we connect that to there and then i believe we need to do the turn first now that rail attack has a two sharp turn of course so we need to take away the platform we need to do the railway and make sure that it's on the correct angle then we connect up and you may need to be careful here because this is this can go wrong very easily when you do that connect that to there make sure there's a switch here there is good 
and then we can build the final platform. Now we need to do the same on the other side. Uh, the train is not on its way in currently, so that's that's good. Now here, that might be an issue actually. You know, what I can do here is I can pull out the track from the station, make the correct curve, connect that up to there, and then I should be able to connect this to there and we get a switch. Ah, perfect. So this is not Schertogenbosch. Okay. Is that... To my Dutch viewers, is that a Dutch station that actually has the name? Schertogenbosch? Or Schertogenbosch? I don't know. Uh, this will be MB Quartz. And now what we can do is set up a train. Let's turn it the correct way around. Let's put it so that it's a little bit ahead of the station. We'll have one freight car for now. We'll go to the train. Rather, we have to go to the train station due to the do the t timetable. Oh, I need to change. How do we do that then? Locomotive. Insert Choo Choo name. This is... What did I call the uh, the Titan Forest? Was that the name of the zone? Yeah. So this is TF. MB. Quartz Express. The timetable. We need to add the TF Quartz and then we need to add the MB Quartz cannot dock outside of station that's good start the timetable and we can enter the train this way I don't have to mess with all of those uh, connections all the time Now the switch is, is not going to be an issue because when you have a train driving on autopilot it ignores the switches. Which is handy when you're building a network. Otherwise the switches would be a nightmare. This also gives me the option to just sit back and watch the nice view while we're driving out there. train is slowing down good I'm gonna jump off here and run over to the station because I want to disable the timetable autopilot as quickly as possible so timetable this autopilot off and that'll leave the train here which is exactly what I want so now I brought the uh, Alclad aluminium sheets reaching the end of the episode so we go to number five then we connect up the actually i need to conserve these sheets so eight of these produce 300 so we're going to use mark four belts from here because until we get the um, aluminium up and running i don't want to use any more of those outclad aluminium sheets than strictly necessary. I can remove this. That was just for measurement purposes. And don't worry about connecting them the wrong way in quotation marks the belt will go the right way because uh, the game detects that it's on the um, on the angle so here and two out we need to go up two connect that up and this one is going to be interesting because we need a merger here it's going to be 
Yeah, it's going to have to go down there. It's going to slightly clip into the um, uh, conveyor pole stack there, but that can't be helped because I need to do it like that. And then this belt connects up to there. Well, you know, it would be helpful if I actually put it the correct way. But of course the game keeps tricking me with turning these around when I think they are the right way. So there, and finally there. Now the question is how do I connect that up down here? Because I want it to come on, the, on a straight angle here. So if I want that to go on a straight angle... Then we want it to come down here. And we want to use a lift down there. Let's go on and one, two, three, four, five, six. That should suffice. Here we're going to have Mark V belts. Yeah, connect up. Thank you. One, two, three, four. Good. So we turn it here. Two out. And then the question is how far... Oh, it isn't centered here. Okay, so we need to move it here because it's actually on this angle. Yep. But that's not a problem. I can just move it one out. Come on. Good boy. There we go. And then connect that to... Ah, then no. No, that's too far away. Uh, I think we can actually put it... We could put it on the seam because we're going to have a lift here, but... Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put it on the seam because I'm going to remove the... Uh, that means... No, I'm not going to put it on the seam. I'm going to put it on the end of this foundation. Because the lift, if I'm right, should go outside. Yeah, it does. Perfect. That means I don't need this foundation here, so I can have everything hidden under here. And then we can remove the conveyor pole, not the freight platform. And we have to connect up the... Um, the belt, even though I'm going to remove that again. And then we run back onto the platform up here. And that wasn't my brightest moment. Let's go to here so that I can build a ramp. Because I need to be able to see that thing down there. That's a good idea. And we take the lift. And then... I don't think I want to connect it to that one. Let's connect it to that one. And we do the belt. Good. That's funky. Can we remove this? And then we can remove the belt. Not that. The belt. That. That. And then we connect up this to the lift. Good. Oh, I can't go out there. Here we have to do a lift like so. And sadly, I need this conveyor pole here. I wish I didn't, but there is no way to get around that. Connect that up, then we connect that up. And now we need to connect the lift up to the system up here. And I've generally found that if I just look at the thing... I don't know if that goes correct, but generally... No. Okay, so I'm gonna have to count them. It helps, it works if you're on the same height. Is that correct? No. 
And the reason it isn't correct is because that one down there is wrongly placed, I think. Or is it? It certainly doesn't appear to be in the wrong spot. That's weird. Okay, let's climb up here then. Or not. I wish you could get snap lines when you're building lifts. That would be extremely useful. There. There we go. Now the next thing we of course need to do is to connect up power up here. usual process of having one power pole per machine, as I prefer. And then we want the power pole... I think the power pole is going to... Um, to clip here, but... Uh, I'm not too concerned about that. Power pole is in there, so that should be fine actually. It's one offset from the grid. So we can have that here. And I need to have one power pole here and one power pole here. Now I'm not I'm not sure where it, it okay, so it connects over there. Good. We connect up that to the station. And we connect that to the power pole over there because we need power going down to the other part of the outpost as well. Now this one, we're just going to do a line up there. I don't particularly need this one. Well, okay, I can. <laughs> Everyone is probably much surprised by this. So we'll have a straight power line going, going up here and then that connects to there. And that one can connect into this power pole. And then that one can connect out to that one, which can then in turn connect to the miner. Uh, and that one can also connect to the miner. And then it's just a matter of starting to connect up these. I'll just connect one side first because I want to... Um, connect up the the uh, third miner as well there we go and there now I th think that I might have to build another power pole here and then we can build the final one there and we connect that to there that one to there that one to there and then we start connecting up the other side as well. I believe I set everything to produce silica, but uh, I'm going to have to double check that. Thankfully, I don't have to go into every machine to check it. I can see already that this one has not been configured because it's showing a red light. This power pole we want to upgrade to Mark II. So this one needs to be configured. Silica. Green light, green light, green light. Yellow light. That's okay. It means it doesn't have enough resources yet. Yellow, yellow. Uh, yellow. Red. This one needs to be set to silica. Yellow, yellow. Green. Red. Silica. Green and green. Okay, so everything is now producing silica. Wow, that was loud. Yeah, no, the, the, the lift is wrong. Okay, I'm gonna leave the belt there this time. That's going to make a downwards curve, I am certain of it. Yep. Okay, so I can see three lights here. Jeez, this is complicated. Three and one. Is that straight? Please? Thank you. Now I have some silicon in my inventory as well. 
You know I can do that. I can drop it in here. But this belt, of course, won't be full because we're not producing 780. So it will have some spaces between, but that's fine. And then let's check the platform. Okay, it's getting silica. A word of warning. Never stand on a freight car when it's being filled. You will instantly die. Not a good idea. Okay, then we can go to the timetable. The Quartz Express. Autopilot on. And we can enter the train. Slowly easing into the station. And stopping, and now it's going to pick up the container. And this is such a cool animation. I really, really like that animation. Click. And the lift goes back up. And the train starts to drive. No, it's unable to reach next stop. Why? Um, that's not good. This is going to make the episode one hour long then. Okay. Oh well. I'm sure some of you will be happy about that. Others of you might not be that happy about it, but... Why is it unable to reach the next stop? Well, it might actually not be up here that is the problem. It might be down at the station area. Let's uh, drive the train manually then. Uh, turn off. That's not very handy that it's uh, located behind there. There's the truck, by the way. Maybe the roundabout is the issue? But that doesn't make sense, because the roundabout has all of its connections. Because what happens now is that I'm not going to be able to drive onto the, uh, the correct track. If I break down here, because now it wants to send me out there, it does have the appropriate... Um, what's Samajingi called? Uh, switches. But if I remove this track, and I think that this is supposed to be... I don't know. I don't know about those switches at all. They are so random. Yeah, this is the problem. Because it shouldn't stop there. Uh, that's not a good, <laughs> that's not a healthy place to, to uh, go off the locomotive. Okay, this might actually be an issue. Uh, something here has gone wrong. Can I connect that? And if I now put a train... Like say here. Can I drive that over that? Okay, so that was almost certainly the problem. If I then do... And this is quite important that we get this right. If I then connect the railway to there. Now we get one switch here. Which is wrong. There should be two. I'm going to have to drive this train a little bit farther back. Farther back.
Then I need to remove that track. And if I connect that to there, it's going to give us... Oh, the switch disappeared. Okay, there's something not right here. What if I remove this track? And if I connect that to there, that gives me a switch. If I then connect that to there, not there. <laughs> that gives me a switch. But will it send the train... Where will it send the train? Okay, so that worked. Let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna drive down to the... Um... I need to change the switch here. And it is this switch that needs to be changed. For some reason, it's the left one. And this should theoretically take me downwards. Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. Now, I know the switch down there works. I don't want to drive into the back of the other train here and the switch over there if it is predictable will send me straight forward so I need to stop and back up I want to make sure that this train route is working before we uh, end the episode So this switch needs to be set like so. It does appear that the way the arrow is pointing upwards is supposed, at least, to be a uh, bother. Okay, so there might be an issue here as well. Let's go back. Because this is the same thing that happened to me in the roundabout. It just sent me the wrong way. And the train definitely is a bit heavier when it has cargo. But the reason I went this far back is because I might still have been on the, uh, the segment. So that the train might have remembered. I want to see. Does it now go to the left? No, it does not. Which means that I have to go back again. I'll just... No, I can't do that. I have to go back again and just let that train over there drive straight through us because that's exactly what it's going to do. Let's just have that driving through us. Thank you. And then I have to remove the platform there because reasons. And I'll remove this track as well. And the switch disappeared. Good. Now, maybe if I do it from this... No, I have to do it from there. That's the thing. I think that's the reason why it doesn't work. That's on the seam. And the arrow is pointing upwards. Let's point the arrow that way. And I'll just build a new train, I think. That way, if it doesn't work, I can just jump off. Okay, so you have... Okay. Yeah, the build, order, the build order is actually that specific. Jeesh. So you have to build the curve from the... Um, the split, otherwise it won't work. So let's drive into the station.
like so and not the freight platform but the train timetable court express can i set this as the next stop well i can delete it and re-add it no that's wrong I don't want this to be the next stop. Okay, autopilot on. Enter the train. And I do apologize for the length of the episode. I had no idea this would take me this long. At least we get to drive trains, even though they are moody, I guess we can call them. What on earth happened there? jump off the train while it docks into the station and we go to the timetable the quartz express we add the main base uh, quartz it's gonna load more silica now if this doesn't work now I will figure it out in between episodes and find out what on earth the problem is because I can't have this episode lasting for uh, one and a half hours with me running back and forth trying to figure out what's wrong with the train tracks. Hopefully it works now. Yes! Yay! It works! It works! Hurrah! Okay, let's drive back to the base and uh, see that it unlocks or undocks the uh, cargo properly. Uh, while we're driving, of course, <laughs> there might be questions. <laughs> I expect there to be questions or comments to this episode, especially with the, the train thingy. So, first of all, the, the main question that's probably going to arise is what happened with the railroads? You need to connect the um, the uh, switches or the, uh, the crossings from the roundabout, not from the straight track. Otherwise, it won't work, and you've seen that in practice now. But if you do have any other questions or comments, do feel free to leave them in the uh, comment section in of the video or you can also join us in the discord server if you want to do that so you'll find the link for that in the description of the video of course now we're getting into the station here and with the undocking animation Thank you all so much for joining me and for watching this long episode. And it didn't undock, but yeah, I'll look at that. So, I will see you all in the next episode.